Hi, I'm Dino Longuera. We're going to install a speed strip kit, a brand new Ruger Mark III. We've got a Ruger Mark III pistol right here. The very first thing we're going to do, even though it's a brand new gun, we're going to check to make sure the gun's not loaded. We're going to close the bolt using the bolt stop lever on the left side of the frame, like so. Now at this point, as per the Ruger original instructions, we must dry fire the gun. One click. Take out our magazine, lie it aside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open the mainspring housing assembly. That's a small little arrangement, sort of like opening up a pocket knife blade. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little screwdriver, and I'm going to come right into the corner of the latch, and I'm going to pry it open just like that. Now at this point, the entire mainspring housing assembly should pivot away from the frame like this. On some guns, you'll be able to grasp it and pull it down. This one's very tight. It's a brand new gun, so that's not going to happen. I'm going to use a nylon punch. You can use a wooden dowel. It will work just as well. And I'm going to come to the top, and I'm going to tap the bolt stop in. Down into the receiver. And now the mainspring housing assembly, just like so, comes out. We're going to lay that aside for a few minutes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the bolt from the gun. Now we must dismount the upper receiver tube from the pistol grip frame. Now a lot of people will hold it like this and they'll strike the back with a mallet. And that works. The problem is you could lose it and your upper receiver and barrel can go skittling across the floor. The way I prefer to do it is I'm going to hold it like this and I'm going to hold the grip frame. I'm going to come to the corner of my bench where there's a leg. I'm using a foam pad and I'm going to give it a good thump here. I want to hit the upper receiver and I'm going to push it off the grip frame assembly like so. And it came right apart. Now we can lay our upper receiver aside. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a 332 Allen key and I'm going to remove the original grip panels from the frame. Okay, the first part of the assembly is now we're going to change the original hammer to the one that came with your kit. Now for Mark III owners, we make two distinctive options. The big difference between a Mark III and all of the earlier Mark IIs is that the Mark III now incorporates a magazine disconnector. And what that means is the gun will not fire or function without a magazine in place. If you wish to maintain that feature, you would purchase our dedicated Mark III kit. The difference between the two is the dedicated Mark III kit, the hammer will have a relief cut on the right side to incorporate the components that make up the mag disconnector. And what we're going to do is this pin right here is what the hammer pivots upon. It comes through the frame on the left side, it goes through your bolt stop lever, through your frame, through your safety, through the hammer, and it rides flush on this side of the frame. The easy way to do this, these pins usually fit rather loosely, is just push on the pin, you can grasp the hammer and just work the pin out and just pull it out far enough to release the hammer and let it out of the frame. Now this will all pivot up with the disconnect bar like this. We can take our entire assembly, we can lay it aside, I'll give you a better look at that. This is what comprises your magazine disconnector, this is your original factory hammer. Problem people have, most common mistake, is what they'll do is they'll pull this pin out all the way, the bolt stop falls off, the safety falls out, the sear may or may not stay in place, and it all seems lost. It's not a big deal. What we're going to do now, the sear fell out, we're going to work with these three pieces, and we're going to reassemble the sear spring and pin and get the sear back in the frame. What I'm going to do is the sear spring itself has a long end and a short end, and I'm going to grasp the short end with a pair of forceps and I'm going to hold it just like so. Now I'm going to take the pin that the sear has to pivot on and it's this lower hole here in the frame and I'm going to put the pin through the frame I'm going to come down and I'm going to put my sear spring right on the pin just like that. Now what I must do is put the sear back into the frame the sear has a crescent shaped radius cutout that faces the back of the frame. I take my forceps and I hold my sear just like that. I'm going to move the pin out of the way just enough to let the sear go back into its position. 
I'm going to bring it in, put the pin back into place. When you've got your sear in its proper position, in an upright position, it should have spring tension pushing it backward toward the hammer. Now we're going to put the safety back in. We're going to be very mindful of the fact that the safety has a small spring and a plunger, which is what gives it the uh, detent between the fire and the safe position. We're going to hold it without losing that spring and plunger. We're going to put the shaft directly through the frame. Now I'm going to take a punch and I'm just going to push it up flush to the frame. I'm going to pivot it forward over the sear. Now this is a bit of a finagle. I have to hold this assembly. I'm going to take my bolt stop. It slides over the pin in the front. The pivot pin now goes through the bolt stop, through the frame, through the safety, and it'll hold everything assembled just like so. What we also want to be mindful of is in the center of your trigger, you have a spring and a plunger that operates your disconnector bar, that we don't lose that. Now if we're going to keep the magazine disconnector, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the strut and the pin from the original hammer, we're going to install it in the new one. I have a block of metal with some holes drilled in it, otherwise known as a bench block, and I'm going to take a punch and a hammer, and I'm going to tap that out. We can lay aside our original hammer. The Majestic Arms hammer for the Mark III speed strip kit, as I said, has a relief cut. And what we're going to do is we're going to reassemble it. We're going to put the pin into the new hammer. We're going to put the strut into place. Now Ruger's pins tend to fit very loosely, and if you look at the end, there's always a little dimple. They do that to make the pin stay in place. So now using my bench block and a center punch, I'm going to give it that little dimple again. And I'm going to keep it nice and snug. Now I'm going to take the components that comprise the magazine disconnector and I'm going to install them in the hammer and this is the arrangement you should see. When this is assembled, the tail end of this spring will bear on the frame just like so. So I'm going to take this assembly, I'm going to put it directly into the disconnector bar, you've got to keep that spring in a spot, and I'm going to get that all into the frame. And the easy way to do it is to look through that hole like a window, and when it all lines up, I push the pin back into place. Now at this point, we put in a magazine that'll get the sequence started. Now we can cock the hammer. Mounted in front of and below the hammer is the sear. The sear will snap into place, and it'll captivate the hammer in a rearward position. When I pull the trigger, the hammer will be able to go forward. I'll also check that again with the safety on, now when I pull the trigger, the hammer should not go forward. When I turn off the safety and I pull the trigger, the hammer should go forward. But what we're going to do is we're going to omit the mag disconnector with our 3.2 kit. So once again, I'm going to take out this hammer. I'm going to just pull out that pin enough to release the assembly. I'm going to pivot it up. These components we're going to omit. These are the components of your mag disconnector, and we're not going to use this hammer. We're going to use the hammer that came in a 3.2 kit. So now, in your 3.2 kit, you got a hammer and a new hammer bushing. The difference is this hammer has no relief cut. The sides are parallel. As we did earlier, we're going to reinstall the strut into the new hammer. I'm going to do it just like this. The easy way to do this, oftentimes, is to come to a bench block, line up the pieces, and then tap the hammer down onto the pin. Give it a little dimple to keep it snug. Okay. Now, one last thing. The strut does have a front and a back. You'll see a radius cutout. That goes to the back of the hammer. That's how your arrangement looks, just like so. I'm going to take the bushing, and that goes right into the hammer. This all goes directly into your disconnector bar. And once again, as I said earlier, I'm going to put it in, I'm going to look through the frame like a window, when it lines up I put it in, I cock the hammer, I heard the sear snap into place, I pull the trigger, the hammer moves forward, I come back, keep pressure on the back of the hammer, there's no spring on the job just yet, when I pull the trigger, it doesn't move, when I pull the trigger again, it goes. Alright, so that's all complete, we've done all of the work on our lower frame. What we're going to do right now is we're going to remount the upper receiver to the pistol grip frame. In the front, you'll see a lug with a hook arrangement, and your receiver tube has a corresponding cutout. We're going to put the two together like so. We're going to check to make sure the back is square to the frame. Now, many people will do it this way by hitting this with a mallet, and that's all well and fine, that works, but you might slip and break your sights, 
An easier way to do it is I'm going to put my thumb through, I'm going to grasp the barrel, I'm going to hold the grip frame, I'm going to come to the corner of my bench on a pad, and I'm going to give it a good thump to seat the two pieces together. When it's done properly, and this is imperative, the upper receiver will overhang the grip frame a short distance, about a 64th, maybe 32nd of an inch, just like that. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a slight modification to our recoil spring guide. We take that out of the bolt, and what they do here is you've got a steel rod that's split, they slide on the spring, the little horseshoe, they put it together and then they crimp the edge. And then when they crimp that, it leaves a very sharp, rough edge. So what I'm going to use is a Dremel tool. You can do this with a round pillar file, you can do it with a sand cloth, 240 grit sand cloth wrapped around a small stick. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to give it a nice little contour, I'm going to give it a concave edge, then I'm going to bevel the, fo the top edge and the bottom edge also. I'm going to do that right now. Now, we don't want to cut away so much metal that we completely remove the crimp. We just want to give it that little concave and smoothen up and give it a little bevel there. The recoil spring guider assembly goes into the front of your bolt like so and should sit flush. The back piece you'll compress slightly and make the back sit flush to the bolt just like so. And at this point we can put the bolt back into the receiver. Our hammer is in a cocked position. It can't be that way. This is the Ruger dance. What must happen right now to reassemble the gun is the hammer must be lying flat in a cocked position. The strut that dangles from the hammer will lie down parallel to the grip frame. And at that point, the bolt will slide right back into the receiver. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the mainspring housing assembly. We're going to change the factory solid bolt stop pin to the new two-piece design that came in your speed strip kit. So I've got my bench block. I'm going to take a punch and I'm going to drive out this pin this one was loose, and I'm going to take and set aside the original bolt stop pin. I didn't drive the pin out all the way. If you can get it to stay in there, it makes life a little bit simpler. And the easy way to do it is to slide in the new bolt stop pin, look down on the top, and just tap it all together when it lines up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 60 degree punch, and I'm going to give each side of that pin a slight little dimple. You'll see a dimple in there. And I'm going to give it a slight little dimple to make that pin nice and snug and make it stay put. Okay. Now we're ready to reassemble this. Now we're going to do what's known as the Ruger dance. At this point, your hammer is in a cocked position. You can look in the back of the frame and identify it. It has to now be uncocked. It must be all the way forward against the bolt. If you pull the trigger, that allows the hammer to go forward, but bear in mind, there's no spring. Sometimes gravity will do it, sometimes you have to do the job, and just push that hammer all the way forward, but at the same time, make sure the strut lies down parallel to the grip frame. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bolt stop pin, and I'm going to snake it up through the frame, all the way through. This one's a little bit snug. I'm going to use a plastic mallet. This is not the work of a hammer. And I'm just going to continue to seat it. When I'm done, the bolt stop pin will protrude through the upper receiver approximately an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to intentionally make the most common mistake here. If you can close the mainspring housing assembly just like so, you probably won't be able to cock the pistol. The reason is that little strut is not properly positioned to the mainspring housing assembly. So I'm just going to open that back up. I'm going to hinge it open. This one's real snug. That's okay. You'll see a V-cut, and at the bottom of that cut is the cup that the mainspring is sitting upon. What I'm going to do, you have to look in the back of the frame and identify the strut. I'm going to make the strut lean directly on the mainspring housing assembly. So now as I close it, I always do this with the gun upside down. That little strut's going to find itself into position, and the last little bit you should feel some spring tension, and the latch will close, and now the bolt cocks. So what I'm going to do at this point, before I do anything, is I'm going to do a quick function check. I'm going to dry fire the pistol, and I'm going to hold the trigger back, and we're going to check the disconnector. When we cycle the bolt, when I let go of the trigger, it should immediately reset and be ready for the next shot. 
We're going to do that one more time, but this time we're going to lock on our safety, and when I pull the trigger, the hammer should not release. When I turn off the safety, the hammer should indeed release. So now we're ready to field strip the gun, the speed strip method. So we're going to cock it. We've removed, we have no magazine in place. We're going to take the 532 Allen key that came with your kit. And I like to hold the gun like this. I have control over it as opposed to in midair where I might scratch something. I'm going to put the Allen key directly into the new two-piece bolt stop pin. Now these pins are very tight when you first get them, so it will take a little bit of effort, and it might even make a crackling sound. And one, two, three, four, five. There's a relief cut on the pin. If you make it face the back, the pin comes out smoother. If you don't, it'll still come out, but if it faces the back, it's smoother. Grasp the pin with your fingers, remove it, and now slip out your bolt for quick and easy cleaning. When I'm done, I'm going to put the bolt back into the receiver tube. Now right now it's touching the hammer and it must cam and step over the hammer. So just the way you seat a magazine in a pistol, you just give it a slap with the palm of your hand. At this point, if we look in the hole, you can see a little bit of your recoil spring guide interfering in the hole. That's perfectly normal. The pin, as we reinsert it, will cam and step past that. The easy way to do it is to put the pin on the Allen key on the short side. See, now I have a handle like a regular big key. I'm going to put it in, push, and twist at the same time. It stepped past the recoil spring guide, and I'm just going to thread it back into place. And now I'm done. I've speed stripped. I've reassembled. The trigger pull feels nice and clean, about three pounds. The other added benefit to the 3.2 kit is that new bushing that we installed when we omitted the components that make up the mag disconnector. We tweaked its design so that the pre-travel, all of that loose slack of your trigger, will be reduced by up to 65%. The other thing people love is magazines insert very easily and they really drop clean like a 1911. And that's a 3.2 speed strip kit put into a brand new Mark III. Dino Longuera here at Majestic Arms. Thank you very much for watching the video and thank you for buying our products.